On August 18, 2012, the world heard of 15-year-old Gabby Swainson. That was the day she was reported missing from her home on Tamar Street in Northeast Columbia. In the weeks and months that followed, we learned what might have happened to her and the man that Richland County Sheriff Leon Lott thinks is responsible. Freddie Grant, a man Sheriff Lott has referred to as a monster, now faces kidnapping and federal weapons charges. I'm Tyler Ryan. In this webisode edition of Investigation Watch, we sit down with Gabby's mom, Elvia Swainson, and find out what a dynamic young lady Gabby is. So, Elvia, tell me about Gabby. Gabby is, um, she's always been fun, um, energetic, um, just, just, um, a very funny girl. Um, from little, she's, she's an art, an artistic type person and um, she started off doing a lot of drawings. Mm -hmm. I have um, maybe 10 compositions where she would draw from one page to the next. Um, at, actually, it looks like, um, you know how you look at the comics at the bottom where they have the little bubbles with things in it. Right. She would do that kind of stuff and it would not be the best type of drawing, but she got better every year. How she old got was better. she when she was doing that? She was, I'm thinking five. She started at five and I think five was the magic year because I, I um, put her in a lot of things at five. She was doing some modeling. She started dancing at five. Um, I had her in um, gymnastics as well. Um, mm -hmm. We were living on in St. Andrews area at the time, and she attended um, all-star gymnastics. She went to, um, I don't remember the name of the dance group, but it was two dance groups, and plus church. So we, I kept her busy. It's a very full social calendar for a five-year-old. Yes, and that was on purpose. She, um, she would always ask me why she didn't have any sisters or brothers, and although we played around a lot with her dolls, that wasn't enough. So I figured she needed to be around kids uh, her age and that's why she started being in things, a lot of things. And then the next year she said she didn't want to be in anything. <laughs> and then, um, then the year after she wanted to be in something because then she missed the kids. Sure. So then um, that's she- That's pretty routine. It sounds about right, the resume of a six or seven year old. <laughs> Yeah, she just didn't like doing all the rehearsal stuff, but she loved when it was time for stage. She just didn't want to go to practice. And, um, you know, she was just so funny about it all. And the one thing that she loved to do, um, we did together, was play with dolls. Mm -hmm. I mean, from day to night. She didn't want me to cook. She didn't want me to do anything. Just stay in the playroom and play with her. And um, I had to get her some friends. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get her some food. So for a long time, we kept the house full of kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, she, she would invite people to her, over to the house. I, I didn't let her go that often, mm -hmm. but she, she was welcome to bring as many. And we had, I mean, we've had a house full of kids. At, you know, at certain periods of times, we had maybe mm -hmm. six spending the night. That's a lot. And, um, you know, just trying to keep everybody you know, under control and feeding everybody. And, you know, that's a full-time thing for the weekend. I felt sure. like my weekend was shot. Didn't do anything for myself, but, you know, it was all about Gabby. Um, my nephew would come over. They, it was great. They loved to play with those dolls. Mm -hmm. And um, she was into the Bratz dolls for a long time. And when I would send her to Florida, because I wanted her to get to know her cousins and aunt, and uncle very well and I would send her to Florida um, just during the summertime, maybe a month. Um, the first time that I sent her to Florida, she sent me a letter back and I have a copy of the letter and it was so, it, it just tore my heart out. She was saying how she wanted me to be there as well. She didn't want me to just leave her. And, uh, <laughs> but um, that letter, you have to read it. It's really, really comical. You'll see what type type of person I'm talking about. It's like really dramatic. And then at the end, it's like, but when, when I see you, I'm going to be very, 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 very happy. You know, like, okay, made me want to just get on a plane and go get her. But um, she, she, every year that I did that, it, she got better with it. And um, she did it all the way up till the eighth, eighth grade. 
I think it was the eighth grade, she was not able to go to Florida because she was doing a lot more dancing mm -hmm. with the company. And we had to travel for competition a lot. So um, we didn't get to do the Florida thing and she really was upset about that. Um, she felt like she had sacrificed so much um, to dance that like she couldn't do this, she couldn't do that right. because she was always at rehearsal or we were going to competition somewhere and coming back. So she felt like um, some of some of what she used to do or could do was kind of cut. Sure. And so she, um, but she, we kept her in, I kept her in things um, every, every year. Um, she did uh, cheerleading with the Hyatt Park Community Center. Um, then after that, that's when she went to a different dance company mm -hmm. and that was um, Columbia City Jazz. She only took classes to one year and then um, she skipped one year and she came back for two more years and did the company. Um, so that lasted through the eighth grade. And then she said, okay, mommy. And she did also, um, even while she was doing the company, she was also taking another dance wow. with another dance school, Southeastern Ballet, because um, she wanted to get better with her ballet skills. So you're pretty much a taxi full time at this point. Full time, full time. <laughs> I mean, and I didn't mind it because she would still continue to ask me why she didn't have sisters and brothers. And um, she does have sisters, but they're stepsisters. Mm -hmm. We kind of, um, um, you know, well, we found out about them and we finally got to meet them recently. So that was um, a good thing. But all during the time, she always felt she was alone. Um, so I had to keep kids in the house all the way up till maybe 12 or 13. 12 years old, I think that's when we kind of slowed that down a little bit. And she's 15 now. Yes, yeah, she's 15 now. And um, ninth grade, before she started ninth grade, she did uh, do modeling. She went to a different modeling studio. And that was, um, and she did a little performance. And com it was kind of like a competition thing at the Embassy Suites with um, Diabrus Modeling Agency. And um, so then she said, okay, mommy, I don't want to do anything this year. <laughs> and I said, okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, because you're, you know, you got to adjust to high school. Right. And she was going into the biohealth magnet program, and it seemed a lot more intense when we went to the orientations and everything. And I was like, well, yeah, we got to stay on top of things. And so she did really well this year, this past year, um, in the ninth grade. Um, with her grades and everything. I was real pleased with everything. One, just one semester, she did not get such a good grade in, in one class. And that was because um, her teacher told her that she didn't turn in something that was a major grade and it mm -hmm. dropped her grade, um, her grade for that class um, below what we expected. Because as a parent, we always push our kids, push our kids to do the best. And she would want to know, why are you always on my back? I'm making good grades already. And I'm like, I wish somebody would have pushed me when I was coming up. You know, because I was always on the honor roll, but I could have always, I could have done all A's if somebody was pushing me, but nobody really, well, I didn't have that. So, so you always want better for your kids. And that was um, some, of, some of the things that we did together. Mm -hmm. um, then this year, um, we had gone to orientation and Gabby had taken Latin at Dent for two years. That's a tough language. Yes, and she did well in it though. She did really well. So we thought that she didn't have to take a foreign language when she came to high school, but we, um, we got a rude awakening <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't want to do it. But I think the thing is, if you took that one year, then you didn't have to take any more foreign right. language because the two from Dent, the magnet program there, right. would, would equate to what they needed to graduate for high school. So this year, when we went to look at the schedule, she had another Latin on them, like, really? And she was like, really, Mom? Really? <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, well, you don't want to take this? And she said, no, I've already taken enough Latin. And I said, well, um, let's go talk. We, we had to stand in this long line to talk to the magnet program director about it. And they explained to us that she needed the extra, the, the one more year. And I'm like, well, why did we need to take it at Dent if we have to take another year? 
And so when we walked off from the table after getting the explanation, Gabby said, Mommy, I can't take Latin again. I can't take another year. I said, okay, so what do you want to do? She said, um, I want to do Spanish because Spanish is really what she wanted when we went to Dent. But because our last name is an S, by the time we got down to S, there was no more Spanish, no more French. So she had to take Latin. Yeah. So um, when we went to, we, I said, okay, so you want to do Spanish. So we went back over to the, um, to the lady um, over the magnet program and we expressed that we really have to take Latin. I'm sorry, Spanish. We do not want to take Latin. <laughs> and she was able to work that out for us. So, um, but it took us a, maybe about a week or two to get right. that worked out because once everybody is there and they got their schedules and they have to see how many people are in the class or whatever. So um, I would email and I emailed um, the, the lady in charge and she emailed me back finally that we had gotten the schedule. So Gabby was really, really excited about that. And I was excited too because um, um, Spanish is in my background. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so I was really excited about that and I was going to be able to help her with that because I've been wanting to teach her Spanish from way when she was little. But Do you speak it fluently? Or not, very well? I, I'm, I'm, I'm good at it. <laughs> I'm good at it, but I wouldn't say fluent. Okay. Fluent, like, you know, how I speak really, really fast. Sure. Not like that, but I, I, speak, I speak it, but slower. And um, so I wanted to help her when she was little, but she was never interested in learning it. And, Sometimes, you know, you don't want to force things. So I just didn't really force it on her. But I was really excited that she was interested in, in learning it now. Oftentimes know. with teenagers, if they find it their own way, it's often better, right? Sometimes that's the yeah. truth. <laughs> Sometimes that's the truth. So um, she was always fun and, and vivacious and everything. But then I noticed a change with the teen once, once that number has the team behind it. It kind of changed a little bit. The dynam dynamics got a little different. Um, she was a little bit more quiet and more into her friends. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as a parent, you say, oh my gosh, what did I do? You know, and, but we would still communicate in the car. Um, her first year actually uh, riding the school bus was ninth grade. Okay. And she really didn't, she only rode the school bus on Wednesday mornings when it was late start. And um, she was going to try to ride it all year. She never had that experience and she thought I had taken something from her. So I allowed her to go and try the school bus and, mm -hmm. and she quickly realized she didn't like that at that all. It's not a party. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think she said this. Well, one of the things was that she, she felt the school bus driver was mean. Mm -hmm. And um, I think one of the school bus driver was maybe um, yells or something, right. speak really loud. And she just didn't like that. And, and so um, she, she was okay with me taking her to school in the mornings um, and she, picking her up from school. She seems very independent, like she wants to make her own mind up. And then when she tries it, at the school bus. Yes, then, yes. You know what, all right, I've tried it and we'll go back to the other way. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so proud of everything that she has been doing and the things that she, um, I expect she is gonna continue when she comes home, that, that she's gonna continue to be Gabby. Right. So I can't wait to see her when she comes home. So I guess let's let's talk a little bit about um, the occasion of her of her being missing for uh, what what will be a short period, I'm sure. But uh, you know, you you were working, and she's uh, you know she uh, ninth, eighth grade or I'm sorry, tenth grade at this point. She's in the tenth grade now. Okay, tenth grade. Um, and so you're you're working that that particular week that she uh, that she disappeared. Um, walk me kind of through that. That week, um, I knew that I had a big file review, is what they call it, that I had to present. Mm -hmm. um, and I would have to drive, um, during my eight to five, I would drive to another state and get that done. But that consists of you know, caseload. Mm -hmm. And each case, I have to have a report for each case. And my reports have to be it has to be updated every quarter. Okay. We have to present the newest, the latest information on each person. So um, 
you know, it's hard to do it during the work hours, eight to five, because the type of job I have, I'm always on the phone. I always, it's, it's like you're putting out fires. Each phone call is like you're putting out sure. fires. So, and in, in addition to what's needed by the close of business. So a lot of times I would have to take Gabby in with me to the job um, after picking her up from tumbling or cheerleading practice. I would drive back to so the job. You're still a mom taxi even up to a couple of months ago. Sure. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I got a big break, but guess what? I really wish I could still be a taxi right about now. I mean, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world now. But um, and it's not a chore. It's what I like to do. Sure. Um, the thing is, I would take her into the office with me, and it would, might have been. It might be eight o'clock. It might be after I pick her up from cheerleading rehearsal and come here and give her, get her something to eat or whatever, off back to work. So kind of like a workaholic kind of thing. Right. Um, but Gabby would tell me a lot of times she didn't want to go. She said, I don't want to go up there. She says, I've done it so much in the past and I don't want to go. And I said, okay. I said, but you know what? I really don't want, I really don't want you to be here by yourself. Because whenever she's here by herself, it wouldn't be for long periods of hours. It would be, you know, for a short time, maybe when she get off the school bus, if she rode the school bus home until I got off from work or something like that. So I didn't really, you know, really wasn't too happy about that. And I talked her into it. I said, well, just bring something that you can work on while I'm working. And I promise, I promise I'm going to get out on time. And see, I would promise in the past, and then it would be another 30 minutes. And then she would say, Mom. And then she would just do her time or she'll come walk up and down the aisle a couple of times and look at me and I was like, okay, okay, okay. So I said to myself, I said, well, I gotta do something different. I gotta do something different. I mean, on Saturday, she sleep late. So it would be easier for me to run. I mean, it's just 10 minutes up the road, run up there, do as much as I can and come back. Don't stay too long. When I come back, she would be home. Mm -hmm. Um, never expected that when I come through the door, she was not going to be here. So mm -hmm. that's where I get off from work at fr on Friday, but mm -hmm. I wanted to have these reports done by the end of the weekend so that come Monday, Tuesday, I present them to my supervisor sure. who would then review them to make sure everything was okay. And then Wednesday, I think it, the review was either Wednesday or Thursday, and I would have to go present them. And this is on the, the 17th at this point of August, right? Friday? The 17th is Friday, yeah. Friday, um, Friday, when I got off from work, um, 5 o'clock, I raced over here because Gabby had guitar lessons that I was taking her to. We had, she had asked me to sign her up for extra lessons because she wanted to be a little bit more advanced with the guitar, and so we did. I, signed her up at Star Music, and, um, and that's on Two Notch Road. So when I got here, I said, let me hurry and take her on to her um, rehearsal, mm -hmm. I mean, her practice, and it was for 30 minutes. But then prior to that, she had asked me if she could go out with one of her friends, a guy that she had liked for quite some time. And in the past, I didn't allow it, but I said, you know, I can't keep not allowing it right. at some point. I have to allow it. So um, it was real funny how that was going because, like, they planned it before, and I said, no, no. And then she came back again, and she asked, well, can I do this? Can I do that? And I said, well, just let me know all the details, and I'll see how I can work that out with you. And, so then finally. So she's negotiating with you to see this boy, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she enough. just, and I said, well, why can't he just tell you that on the phone? And she would be like, well, he just wants to talk to me face to face. And so, <laughs> so I said, okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll let you go out. You know, she wanted to go to the Sand Hills mm -hmm. and the time was from 6.30 to, I think 7.30 was going to be the time. Um, but she told him 6 to 7.30. And we don't get out of music till six. Right. So while she was in there, I went two doors down to the nail shop and I was getting my nails done. And when she got done, she came in there. She says, really, mom, really? It's six o'clock, mom, it's six o'clock. <laughs> and I said, well, Gabby, I don't have a jet outside <laughs> because you say six here and you told him six, you don't get out till six. So um, we were just kidding around in there, and she was texting. You know, she loves to text. And um, so 
So I finally I said, okay, 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 let me just, I said, can I just pay you? And I'm gonna go and come back. So I um, paid the lady and I went and took her to the Sand Hills. I met with her friend and I said, okay, I know where you live. I know where your mom <laughs> lives. I, I know your mom, because um, they actually attend the summer camp together. Right. So I kind of know them and I've been knowing them for over a year and a half. Uh, well, since eighth grade, I've been Excellent. knowing them. Yeah, so sure. A minute or two, as the kids say. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I don't know the slang. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, I kidded around with him a little and, and um, I said, OK, so um, I'm coming back at such and such a time. I think I told him 730. But then I went back to the nail place and finished getting my nails done. And, and they took a little longer. So when I called her back, I said, okay, eight o'clock, just be sitting in front of Belks. Mm -hmm. So when I drove around, sure enough, they were both sitting in front of Belks and they had their little doggy bag of, um, you know, they went to Asian Bowl, I think that's where they went. Um, and I talked, I said, well, if he needs a ride home, just let him know that I'll take him home. And they both jumped in the car and I took him home and we came home. So she went straight on up there. She was very excited about the guitar lessons because mm -hmm. that guy, at, he's so good. He was showing her all the things he could do and he told her to get a list of music that she really, really liked and he would help her to learn it. So she was really excited about that. So when we got here, she ran up the stairs and changed and I heard the, the guitar going and it was raining really hard around that time and I was down here watching a movie. So um, then, then, I, then she came down to bring me her phone because we, um, we um, were on this program with the phone and time management and going to bed and things like that. And school getting ready to start. We need you on kind of doing what you're going to be doing when school gets back in. So she brought me the phone and I said, um, I said, why don't you come down here and watch a movie with me? And she, she said, OK. And she jumped in the bed with me and we were watching a movie and I dozed off. Um, because she normally will flip it to Disney Channel or something like that, and um, my mind isn't with Disney Channel. But I try, I try to watch it, and sometimes she, sometimes she asks me, um, "You didn't even watch it?" And I said, "Well, I can't get with." Um, and I named the name of the show. I said, "I don't understand it," <laughs> and I get out of it like that. But um, so she's okay with me doing that. So then uh, I woke up. It might have been midnight, and I said, Gabby, it's late. I said, go to your room. I said, go into your room. Mm -hmm. And um, she went on up, and I kept trying to go back to sleep, but I was restless, couldn't go back to sleep, couldn't go back to sleep, just kept trying to go back to sleep. And I think I was just thinking about those reports, and mm -hmm. I needed to have them done by the end of the weekend. And I was determined to get them done by the end of the weekend, so I was going to do a little bit. So I said, well... I might as well go since I can't really go back to sleep. And it was, by that time, it was about maybe 3 o'clock. And I got up and I got dressed. In the morning. Right, in the morning. And I, said, and I took her her phone and I shook her. I said, Gabby, Gabby, um, here's your phone. I said, I'm going to go to run off to work and I'll be back. And so that might have been around 3.30, 3.35, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. I'm Did you not go to sure. work at 3.30 a lot or was it something just No, different? when these, only when these things are due. Sure. I can be in the office about any, any time at a, any given moment. Usually it would be late at night, mm -hmm. like maybe 9 to 12 or something like that, usually. But I just did not want to take away from her day, like me having to drag her in there with me. Right. So I figured I'd get it done and come back. And the next day it was planned um, at my church. We were having a women's conference, which... I think it was going to start at about 11 o'clock. So I had talked to Gabby before about the women's conference, and I asked her, did she want to go? And she said, no, she didn't really want to go. Um, so she was going to tell me which friend she wanted to hang out with while I was at the women's conference. So basically, I was coming back early enough to get all that straightened, straightened mm -hmm. out. So when I got back home at 730, I opened the door. And I hear the alarm going off, and, I, and I'm wondering. You mean like a, a clock alarm? The clock thing? alarm going off. And I, I said, Gabby, I know you hear that alarm up there. And then something dropped inside of me and went running upstairs mm -hmm. because that's, you know, 
just something I felt like she would have turned this off by now. Sure. So I run up there and she's not in her bed. And that's when I panicked. I went running from room to room to see if maybe she went and laid down in another room or and um, I ran outside and checking and you know knowing good and well my daughter would not be anywhere that time of the morning it mm -hmm. was just my first reaction and yelling her name and and so I run back inside and I call her phone first the first thought I had was to call her phone her phone rang about eight eight to nine times and no one answered then it hung up and you then, didn't go to voicemail or anything? No, it hung up. I think it hung up. So then I, did it go to voicemail? I'm not sure if it went, I don't think it went to voicemail. It mm -hmm. just hung up. Usually it doesn't ring that long before right. it goes to voicemail, but it did. So then I called it back and then it went straight to voicemail. Mm -hmm. And then I was just distraught. I started calling everybody I knew. Um, I called um, a guy that, it's good friend of the family. It's good friend to me and my daughter, and we know him very well because he was helping us do a lot of things around the house. And called him, called law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And the reason I called him first was because I didn't think law enforcement would get here quick enough. You talking so, about Freddie? Is that the gentleman? Yes. Okay. So I called him first to help look sure. for her, and then I called law enforcement next because I didn't know if it was going to take them 20 minutes. 30 minutes. Then I called the music teacher because um, she's um, there. Gabby has a close relationship with her. And then I called my nephew because she's close to my nephew. So I started calling everybody that I thought she was close to. And everybody started showing up. Mm -hmm. And nobody had heard from her, nobody, anything? No, nobody had heard anything. So we started. And this is Saturday morning? This Saturday morning. morning. Okay. Saturday morning. And police department came and he said that he thought maybe it was a runaway situation. I said, no, my daughter would never run away this time of the morning. If she was planning on running away, this, not, this is not what she would have done. Um, she's not a runaway type of person anyway. Right. But if she, were, if she were to think, even to think of running away, it would not have been this time of the morning. I mean, she had so many opportunities while I'm at work from eight to five, I mean, because it was still summer. And, but the, the bottom line is she's not that type of person. All teenagers, when they get upset with you, they're gonna threaten you, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, she had threatened, threatened to do that in the past when I take her phone from her because they love their phones and their laptops. That's well, the end and, of the world if you, if you lose a cell phone. That's the end of the world, no doubt about it. It is the end of the world for most teenagers because they are on their texting and, and on the laptops. And um, I just, we just didn't have any clue of, of what happened. So I, um, we started trying to hack into anything to see if we could get a clue. Mm -hmm. Hacking into Facebook, hacking into email addresses. Did not know how to do the, the phone. Right. To see if we could track the phone. Didn't know how to do that. Called the phone company and tried to get walked through it. That's after I gave the police department my mm -hmm. report. How were they to deal with it? Were they, they open to the fact that it maybe wasn't a runaway case? Good. After I talked to him, I think he was here from, he might have been here from 8 to maybe noon, the mm -hmm. police, police officer. Um, he took my statement. He said he had to put it in a certain way into the system. And then um, I kept talking to him, telling him that she's not this type of person. She will not run away. Um, she's pretty, she's been pretty much sheltered. She doesn't like riding the school bus after I let her try to, try to ride the school bus. Um, she doesn't know how to drive. Mm -hmm. Um, not yet anyway, we were 
in the process of getting her some lessons. Mm -hmm. um, just didn't know, have a clue, did not have a clue that morning, did not have a clue that morning, Sunday, Monday, didn't have a clue of right. what, where, who, when, didn't have a clue of anything. Um, the police department, um, most of them came in and Monday night and went through her room mm -hmm. thoroughly and because usually on a runaway situation, they say, not the police department, but people say that they'll be back within two to three days. Mm -hmm. And um, after Monday night, Tuesday is when they presented who the suspect was and who they felt the suspect mm -hmm. was. And what went through your mind at that point? Disbelief. Mm -hmm. I was, I was, I was, I couldn't, I couldn't just, I can't find the words for how I felt with what they were bring, presenting me with. And I just felt that they made a mistake. That, that can't be, that can't be right. You know, that was my initial reaction. And I was upset with them because I kept saying, go find my child. She's somewhere out here. I don't want to hear that. That's, that can't be right. You have to go find my child. I've been doing things the entire weekend from Saturday, couldn't sleep Saturday, can't sleep Sunday, can't sleep Monday. You know, I'm thinking, where is my child? She's never been out of my, out of, out of, you know, out of, out of my sight that for that very long of a time other than going to school for the amount of time that she has to be in school and me being at work, hadn't been out of my sight for that long. Um, Saturday night was worse because you know, because I had done some flyers with my name and my telephone number, everything on there, mm -hmm. you know, there's not a manual that tells you what to do. And not knowing what to do is, and not, get, not, knowing, not knowing what to do is like the worst thing ever. You're helpless, you don't know what to do, you don't know who to call. So I called um, Richland County back and I asked, that was later on that night, Saturday night, and I asked them about an Amber Alert. Mm -hmm. And I think they told me it did not qualify be, right. because of some, you have certain rules, some, certain guidelines that fit. There are very fit. specific criteria that trigger an Amber Alert, yeah. Right, so I was, so I started calling other people trying to get some clue of what to do, where to go, what, you know, what other uh, assistance I can get. and. Um, Saturday night, I went driving down Clemson Road and I saw two officers at the um, gas station and I said, hey, 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 I, I have a missing child. And um, they were just, you know, chit-chatting and, and he said, yeah, I know. And he kind of blurted out my address and I was like, okay, okay, he's on board, he knows. I felt a little okay, but it still wasn't enough. So I said, well, what's the next step? What do I do next? Right. So he came over and he gave me some, some pointers of what to do. and. Um, like one of them he said is to, by, by that time I had, I, I was able to go into the little uh, program on her phone to try to find the okay. phone by then, you know, because I was working on it like most of Saturday as well. Um, I called the phone company and was on there and they walked me through and they couldn't go any further so then I had to call another company. And they, so by then I knew how to get in there and um, And the officer told me to just get a, all her contacts mm -hmm. out of her phone. And, and the way they can start calling, systematically calling each one right. to try to find her, sure. Right. He said Monday morning the officers would start doing that. So I got that together and I took it to the sheriff department on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And um, I had some friends that knew some friends and they said, hey, we can... Um, we can try try to get you on television to to, to get the word out. So your your um, your news channel was the first ones to pick up the story. Um, Katie came out and she um, she did a fantastic job helping me to get the word out. And I felt like that was my Amber Alert since I couldn't get the Amber Alert. They explained it better to me on Monday, um, but from there it took off. 
Um, FBI got involved by the end of the week. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't really get into much detail about the investigation piece of it. Um, I know everybody wants to know what's happening, what's happening, what's happening. Sure. And I even want to know what's happening sometimes because some things they can't even tell me. Um, one thing for sure is we don't know where she is at this point. And no one disappears off the face of the earth. Um, I'm still believing that my child will walk through these doors one day soon. Um, I don't know how it's going to happen. I pray as soon. I pray as soon. I, I'm still believing she's alive and she's going to be well. And, you know, she's going to be able to tell this story better than anybody else. Um, because the only, only person that know what happened is Gabby, the person that's responsible, and God. And so... Ultimately, God has the power. He has all the power in what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen. When I want something to happen, it's not when God will have something to happen. It's in his time. You know, I've been hearing people saying, oh, you're so strong, you're so strong. But no parent wants to walk in these shoes, not at this time, because it's the saddest time of my life. I can't interact with my daughter like I want to, not yet. Um, haven't been able to do that for quite some time and I try not to count the days. That's one thing um, I don't do is count how many days, but when I hear it, I know. Sure. Um, I have not been watching news. I haven't been watching any television because I don't want anything negative to get into what I'm thinking and what I'm believing and what I'm hoping for. And I'm not listening to any radio stations. Pretty much right now, I've been doing a whole lot of reading and um, on my knees a lot. Ultimately, God has total control about this whole situation. Whether I'm getting updates, whether I'm you know, daily I've been trying to think of what to do next, what to do, what else can I do? I've um, contacted so many agencies that um, work with missing persons to try to get some idea, even, even um, sent applications for their help in certain things that they can do. Um, so I've signed up with maybe five or six agencies at this time. I am signed up with about five or six agencies. Started with National Missing and Exploited, um, Polyclass, and Q Missing Person. There's so many of them that I've signed up with, sure. and each one will give me different things that they can do. Some of them say they need permission of law enforcement to do this or to do that. But bottom line is, um, Nobody goes missing off the face of the earth. She has to be somewhere. And the reason I don't come, I don't do this for publicity. This is solely to help me find my child. I have no interest in nothing else but finding my child. That is the only thing I'm concerned with at this point. Um, My child comes first in my life. If you could, uh, with our viewers that are watching um, on the television, the internet, if you had a, a message, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm certain you've given it, but I'd like to hear it, um, to admit maybe that one person who, not involved necessarily, but maybe saw something that didn't, that doesn't think it's a, a big deal, you know, one salient piece that maybe doesn't, doesn't think it's that big a deal, but maybe they spent the last 20 minutes with us and understand what kind of girl Gabby is and, uh, and see your devotion and dedication to her. What's that message to that one person with that, that one, the key, the little, little golden key that's going to open the door and she's going to be standing there? I 
um, this is my message. Um, since this has started, I'm not sure if people were able to connect the dots with Gabby's case. I believe things had been um, released, but then another piece would be released here, and then another piece would be released there. And um, I think if they, if they can see all the pieces together, then they may be able to remember something from that day. Um, her, her photo is all over the news, so they pretty much, I think, have an idea what my child looks like. Um, the police department did release that she may have been transported in a, in a vehicle, mm -hmm. which they released that on another date, I believe, and, and um, that would have been a 1992 um, Ford, Ford Ford Escort. Escort, excuse me. Right. And then um, the one thing she did have on pink and black pajama pants. They were striped, pink and black striped pajama pants, a black camisole top. Um, she had a black um, wrap on her head and it had pink in it as well. So she was coordinated even to go to sleep. <laughs> she has two ear hole piercings and she would have had just the uh, one stud um, earrings in her ear. She doesn't sleep with jewelry on, um, and she has the blue braces. Um, by now, she may not even be in those clothes, but um, the one thing is, um, if you've seen anything and I'm, I'm, asking, oh, I'm asking for anyone if they can go back. I know we're like, people say so far out with these days that they may not even feel like they can remember back. But if they remember something back around eight, the 18th, 19th, or 20th of those dates, I think those dates are critical. And um, whether they felt it was nothing, not a big deal, whether you saw a car, if you found a phone, because um, she did have a, um, she did have a, a, her phone on her. That's the only thing that she had with her. What kind of phone was it? It was an iPhone, a 4S iPhone. And um, she had a cover on it, which was gray and yellow. And it's called the Otterbox case. Um, so those are some clues. If anybody saw a phone like that, that they found somewhere, or if they remember the car, or if they remember seeing her, um, kind of jog their memory. I know it's going, back, it's going backwards a couple of days, but if they could just think really hard, and um, if they could call in the Crime Stopper number or the police department, Sheriff, Richland County Sheriff Department, we need these t tips to come in so that we can locate and bring her home, locate my child and bring her home. There's always that question, uh, you know, Freddie Grant and the relationship and, you know, people are, are, I guess, maybe second guessing, you know, the way you determine the relationship. And I, what would you say to those people who are questioning your relationship with him? Initially, I was really upset because that's not helping me find my child. Mm -hmm. That's where my focus is. Um, my point is with that is um, no matter if you trust somebody or you're friends with somebody or boyfriend with somebody, girlfriend with somebody, they don't have the right to walk into your house and take your child out of your house. Right. And that is the scenario that that you know, that's the scenario I've been presented with. Is what happened. Is what I've been told. Is what happened. Do you believe it? Um, initially, I couldn't believe it. In 
initially I couldn't believe it. And now? And now? I'm just, you know, I... This is what's been presented to me as the evidence. This is everything that's been presented to me mm -hmm. as the only, the only answer to what happened. This is all that's been presented to me. Right. So I have no choice. I, I don't think there's... Initially, I did not believe it at all. Mm -hmm. I just could not. But now, I mean... Some things make sense and some things don't. Sure. So, I'm just wanting the truth to come out in its entirety. Mm -hmm. No matter what it is, I want the truth to come out. And, you know, of course, we're not entitled to go see evidence. Right. And we're not entitled to, I don't understand how things operate. I've never been in a situation like this. I don't know, you know, what makes them say this and what and versus this? I don't know all of that unless they unless it's explained to me. Mm -hmm. So I can only go with the evidence that's presented at this time. I just pray the truth comes out in its entirety. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And I know that, I, and I certainly hope and pray with you that at some point be knocking the door sometime soon. Chef's explaining to you, I'm sure. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. I just want to see her. I don't care. She doesn't even have to explain to me. But later on, I just, um, my thing is, no parent wants to go through this. No parent, not even, you, I hear the statement, you wouldn't wish this on your worst enemy. You would not. You would not. This is not an easy walk. And um, some days I'm up, some days I'm down, some days I... I Mornings has, has been a little challenging for me, um, but then I get myself together and I say, this is, we're getting closer, we're cl getting closer, she's coming home soon. Um, you know, she's, she's coming home, she's on her way home. I have to keep, keep, that in, keep that in front of me in order to deal with not being able to interact with her on a daily basis at this time. This is the saddest time of my life. As you just heard, Elvia has been presented with evidence from the Richland County Sheriff's Department that Freddie Grant may be responsible in the disappearance of her daughter. She continues to attempt to contact him in hopes he'll either provide her with the whereabouts of Gabby or information that he's not involved. If you have any information about Gabby's whereabouts or maybe what happened to her, regardless of how insignificant you think it might be, you're urged to call Crime Stoppers at 1-888-CRIME-SC. I'm Tyler Ryan. Thank you for joining us for Investigation Watch.